High school sports fans, are you following Varsity Media on our YouTube channel? For the best coverage of New York high school sports, make sure you head to youtube.com slash varsity media. Three easy steps. First, hit that like button, and then be sure to subscribe. And finally, tap that yellow bell to be notified of all of our upcoming sportscasts. Thank you for following Varsity Media on YouTube. High school sports fans, Varsity Media Pass is the exclusive live stream partner of Nassau County Playoffs. For semifinal and championship coverage of boys and girls lacrosse, softball, and baseball, head to varsitymediapass.com to order. Varsity Media is the home for New York high school sports. It's a battle of Nassau County Blue Bloods and two teams who are two-time defending state champions. What a way to start the season for the Seahawks as they take on the Indians from Manhasset. Well, good evening, everyone. We welcome you inside the press box. We are here at Lessing and Bouchard Field. Dylan Butler joining you here in the Varsity Media Sports Network for what should be an outstanding contest between uh, two of the most storied programs, certainly in Nassau County, and uh, two teams who continue to have title aspirations, even though both have some changes in their team, right? You have, you have to uh, reload and, and get new guys in. And that's certainly the case for Manhasset. When we look at the Indians, uh, we know what they were these last couple of years. They were Cal Girard, a generational faceoff guy, and some really talented attackmen as well. Three All-Americans on last year's team have gone on and graduated from a squad that went 21-1, and beating Jamesville DeWitt to win a second straight Nassau Class C championship. But there's a culture at Manhasset, and it's of winning, and it's the next man up mentality, and that's going to be the case here. They do have one game under their belt, it's a one nothing. Or they are one and zero on the season, beating Roslyn ten seven in their opener. And while they do have some new pieces on the attack in the first midfield, of course, at faceoff where Gerard now at Duke, um, it is a team that has a lot of returning guys, especially on the back end. So um, some talented defenders and uh, a goalie too, who's back, who's played in a lot of big games. We'll take a look at the Manhasset impact players now and it starts with these two up top Danny Colon you see his numbers from a year ago 34-7 and 41 he is a Navy commit will go on to play for Joe Amplo in a couple of years all county player last year he's taken on more of a leadership role this year where he's stronger he's better really confident with the ball in his stick as well Colon uh, is that guy to lead the attack line this year and we know about Jack Mulholland whatever the sport is whether it's football, of course, here in lacrosse as well, and wearing a special number as well. We'll get to that throughout the broadcast. But wearing that number 44 this year, the Dartmouth commit, all-county football and lacrosse. Uh, he is absolutely the leader of that close defense. And as he goes, they go. And in the back, you've got a lot of really tough, physical, and athletic guys. And we'll talk about the two Jacks, Mulholland and Morrison as well. Rowan Collins, a long stick mini, all of those guys back from a year ago. We flip the script now, looking at the Seahawks of Cold Spring Harbor, and they too coming off an outstanding season. Maybe a few more losses than they were used to. They went 14-6 and six last year, but they ended it with another state championship, and that's kind of what they do around these parts. Their sixth state title. They're second in a row in Class D as well. And uh, again, these guys, too, have high expectations, and for good reason. And, and again, you do lose key parts, right, from that team a year ago. Led, of course, by C.J. Riley in the midfield, now at Michigan. Hayden Calabretta, MIT. You got Kyle O'Grady 
at Hofstra. And of course, Carson Kirshner, a terrific goalie, now at Scranton. So again, Dennis Bond says, listen, we, we reload. We look out for the next guys. And here's a look at the head coach in his 25th season at the helm. Good milestone for Dennis Bond, of course. A Sawanica grad of 19 84, 340 wins and only 83 losses during his time here at Cold Spring Harbor. But again, it's similar, and this is one of the reasons why we love this matchup. It's a similar theme with Cold Spring Harbor. It's about the culture of winning and success and just putting on the jersey. There's a lot of expectations to come with it. And two guys to look forward to today and really throughout the season as well. You see on the left, Alex Bauer, such a smooth midfielder. He will join C.J. Riley as well at Michigan. But uh, listen, he's a guy who played on attack a lot last year when Calabretta was hurt. So uh, he's a guy who, whether it's on attack or in the midfield, really understands the game a lot. You see his numbers from last year, 30, 12, and 42. And you need a Pisano in the back for Cold Spring Harbor. Patrick Pisano, the older brother, crushing it right now at Yale. And Timmy Pisano, he's got a lot of those same attributes that Patrick has where they're both quiet, but they have that inner burning fire, says Dennis Bond. And Timmy Pisano will lead that back line uh, today or tonight, I should say, as well as the rest of this season as well. We take a look at the starters for both of these teams, starting off with the visitors from Manhasset. And Keith Cromwell doesn't remember the last time they came out here as Manhasset. But there you see the front line of Colin, Beschel, and Arnold. Arnold wearing that special number four. And Mondiello leading the line in the midfield wearing that Johnny Driscoll number 32. Luca Petroselli, Cole Purcell round out the first midfield line. Facing off, we'll talk about him throughout. Tyler Giacobbe, a guy who was 56% in backup duty a year ago to... A guy in Cal Girard who only won like 83% of his faceoffs last year. A ridiculous number. Big reason why, of course, he's at Duke. But you see the close D as well of the two Jacks now. We had three Jacks last year. It's two Jacks. Jack Mulholland, Jack Morrison. The third guy, the one guy who wasn't a returning starter in the back line is Brian Fleck. What we don't show you there is Rowan Collin at LSM. He's also a returning starter. In the cage, Matthew M. He's a guy who started his... High school career as a sophomore came on in the big game against Darien, one of the rivalry games they have. Played really well in that one. Good in the clearing game. A good shot stopper as well. And Ims got the job. Who got the job then, and he's continued to have that job. A Tampa commit is the senior goalie. Let's take a look at the starters now for Cold Spring. Oh wait, first we can't forget Cromie, right? There's head coach Keith Cromwell in his eighth season. As Manhasset head coach, a 1997 graduate of Hicksville, a guy who still has Rutgers' all-time record for points and goals, a three-time All-American there, and a 12-year MLL veteran. Was a rookie of the year back in 2001 with the Long Island Lizards. So for Cold Spring Harbor, let's take a look at their starters. And really, of the starters, only Kevin Burns, you see there, wasn't part of the varsity last year. So even if guys uh, are into new roles, they've, they've been part of the culture. They've been part uh, of what the expectations are, the speed of varsity play. But you have Burns, Testa, and Mozzie on attack. Your first midfield line of Bauer, McGloin, and Sammy Bruno, who will also face off for the Seahawks. Their LSM is Cole Newman. Sophomore. Look at the close D of Pisano, Yuliko, and Howell. And in the cage is James Grego, the senior football player as well. 19 saves, eight goals against a year ago. Again, limited action behind Kirshner, but a guy who Bond has a lot of confidence in his ability to make the saves he needs to make and also clear the ball as well. We take a look at the keys to this one as... It's like Bond's taking a lap for Manhasset. And again, when, you, when you've got newer guys, it's important to you got to understand the middle of the field, says Cromwell, and also identify the guys early on offense, right? We're, again, trying to figure out how guys look in a big-time game with the lights on. 
but he does feel pretty comfortable on defense, which is going to be a key for Manhattan. So as a lot of those parts on offense get going, you've got that comfort with the returners on defense. For Cold Spring Harbor, Dennis Bond says of the five losses, or of the five of six losses a year ago, they were by 10 combined goals. And in those games, they were sub 20% from the faceoff effect. So you want to get 50% of the faceoff wins. Similar theme, the young guys, they've got to grow up pretty quickly here. And a overriding theme for the Seahawks this year, stay healthy, very important for them. So it's been Hassett and Cold Spring Harbor, two blue bloods in Nassau County, opening face-off when we return right here on the Varsity Media Sports Network. Are you a local business looking for new and creative ways to promote your company? Varsity Media offers affordable rates that can get your message across to a demographic of 18 to 54 years of age. Our follower base across social media is over 50,000 strong and our viewership numbers per game are in the thousands. Don't blow your advertising budget on old staples like TV and radio media. Reach out to Varsity Media to get the best bang for your buck. High school sports fans, Varsity Media Pass is the exclusive live stream partner of Nassau County Playoffs. For semifinal and championship coverage of boys and girls lacrosse, softball, and baseball, head to varsitymediapass.com to order. Varsity Media is the home for New York high school sports. Varsity Media offers live streaming services for any sport. With human beings behind the camera, you can expect the proper coverage angles during each game. We offer customizable options such as live scoreboard, multiple cameras, instant replay, graphics, and even announcers. Find out how you can save $100 off a live stream package with Varsity Media by calling 516-403-2050 or email Ben at Varsity Media. Inside the tent to the end zone. Oh, he's got a wide open receiver. AJ Duff. We welcome you back to Lessing and Bouchard Field here under the lights at Cold Spring Harbor as Manhasset and Cold Spring Harbor set to battle once again. And it's interesting, as we alluded to in the open, these matchups the last few years have been largely at Ed Walsh Field over at Manhasset. Neither of these coaches really remembering the last time they played here and Cromwell thought it might have been when he was the head coach at Locust Valley. But there you see some of the most recent uh, meetings between these two teams. 15-3 a year ago, Manhasset with the win at home. Matt Cargiulo, we just saw him playing for UMass. Three goals, Liam Connor with three and three. Aiden Haggerty with three and two. The year before, you see that matchup on May 4th. That also at Manhasset, Cold Spring Harbor, an 8-7 win on that day. Jake Rogers with three goals. Luke Giraputo with two and two. That was a year that Cold Spring Harbor lost just once and they beat Manhasset. They beat Garden City both on the road en route to a state championship. You see those, so those are the most recent matchups. All of those played at Manhasset and the Indians have 
uh, the edge all time, at least since 1982 in these meetings as well. 46 to 21 is the edge for Manhasset in these meetings. And again, dating back to 1982. So both teams meeting at midfield, and it'll be certainly a different look at the faceoff acts as uh, we'll get to that once these two teams break. But it is nearly impossible to replace a Cal Girard, right? And you kind of don't do that, or you don't expect that next guy to be that guy. So that's a little bit of what the conversation has been with Tyler Jacob. Jacoby as well as now you take a look at it. Sammy Bruno for Cold Spring Harbor. Uh, he's the guy to lead that charge. He's going to stay on as a first midfielder. So it's not a Fogo. And then you see Giacobi on the other side. Struggled against Roslyn. Was only about 30% from the faceoff X. So we'll see how that matchup starts it off. Bruno goes backwards and Cold Spring Harbor wins the first faceoff. And they've got the first possession of this game, first shot off the mark. Here's a good look at Andrew Mazi. Mazi was a fourth attackman a year ago and kind of would run in the box at a few times, but he is the guy this year, at least one of the starting attackmen for Dennis Bond's Seahawks this year. And there's Mazi at X. And there's Ryan McGloin. The Middlebury commit. Back to Mazi at X. Patience on this first possession for Cold Spring Harbor. First of the season. That's Roy Test at 39. Keep an eye out for him. Looked really good a year ago as an eighth grader. Now Mozzie from X, and there's the first save of the game by M. Traditionally, Cold Spring Harbor, this is way where they thrive in the ride game. Some physicality at midfield. And Manhasset comes away. And first flag is thrown. And Manhasset we're offside, so first man up. Excuse me, Cold Spring Harbor was offside, so first man up opportunity goes to Manhasset. This is a 30-second man up opportunity. Mondiello swings it to Arnold. Twelve seconds left on the man up for Manhasset. Arnold feeds the crease, and there's the goal. A great look from Arnold. And then cashing in at the crease was Luca Petroselli. So one man up, one goal, another look at it. You see the ball movement and the off ball movement as well. But it goes from Arnold and simple, right? Attacking the crease is Petroselli. And Petroselli is a guy who Cromwell calls a quiet assassin and one of those X factors maybe this year. Clean faceoff win. So... Manhasset. And a flag is thrown. I was about to say they'll get a second possession. They were going to. And it looked like it was a trip on that far side. So another 
man up opportunity. This is going to be for one minute for Manhasset. So they already cashed in on their first. And this time they've got a full minute to look for a second goal. And it's Petroselli, who's a stud soccer player, gets it back in play. Was a leader on that county championship team this past fall. Low to low! And Arnold already one and one. And the man up is cooking for Manhasset. They are two for two. Pat Arnold, the lefty, goes five hole. As you have another look. Comes from Mondiello. He'll get the assist. And Arnold, a terrific start to this game. One and one. Bruno gets this face off. And Cold Spring Harbor looking for their first of the season. And there's Bauer, the Michigan commit. Spins, fires, and Bauer! Didn't take him long. Another look. See Bauer, spins, fires low. Beats him, 30 goals a year ago as a sophomore. That's Jared Beschel at X, junior bound for Holy Cross. Petroselli comes out of the box. Really strong on his feet. Petroselli, a terrific athlete. Arnold. That's Colin. And back up top to Petroselli. Gets topside. Coming downhill, Mondiello. Here's Arnold now. Good work defensively. Ground ball, though, picked up by Colin. Working off the screen. Spins, nothing there. Colin. Trying to feed it across to Colin. Good interception. But a good stick check and some physicality at midfield. You credit Beschel there working his way back. And a timeout is called by Manhasset. I want to thank our New sponsor, Bowie 4, and here is their story. Six childhood friends from Long Island. They grew up together on and around the water. They developed a special connection to the serenity that the water provides. That's where the Bowie 4 mantra was born. We choose the water. With every purchase made, they donate a portion of the proceeds to water conservation groups. Bowie 4 offers a full range of apparel and accessories for team stores, corporate gear, and fundraising initiatives. All of our products are designed, created, and printed on site. Buoy up your wardrobe. Get your limited edition game day hoodie for 24 hours at www.buoy4.com. See you out on the open waters. And stay tuned as well. Post game, the player 
of today's game. We'll get a special buoy for hoodie. Here's a look at it. This is a sweet hoodie. Like, if you're in this game, you're going to want to wear this around. It's specially made just for today's game on the sleeve of the hoodie. It has the matchup and the date as well, and we'll show you the front of it. Oh, we'll show that to you later, but it's a, it's a really special hoodie, and uh, listen, it's pretty chilly out there today as well, so it's a good one to wear on the way home as well. So off the timeout, Manhasset looks to possess. It's Petroselli finding Arnold. Both of these schools as well really value those multiple sport athletes. There's a lot of them on this field for both. Petroselli, you mentioned his ability on the soccer field. Patrick Arnold, the lefty attackman, a basketball guy. We know what Mulholland did on the football field. And there's Petroselli popping out as Beschel. And a flag is thrown, so this will be another man up opportunity. They'll play a two man game at X. Arnold just throws it into the stick, and another penalty is called. This will be a one minute slash. So the third man up opportunity for Manhasset and they are already two for two in this game. So here comes Manhasset. Looking for another man up goal. On Diello, fakes it up top. Shot right into the stick, and Grego makes the save. And now, if Cold Spring Harbor gets the clear, they do. They could maybe get a man down goal. It's off the stick of Testa. And Manhasset comes away with it. That's Eric. Salura, great stick check. And you can hear that from up here. That was by Bauer. That's McGloin now. And two hands up by Dennis Bond. They'll look to kill this off. Another three seconds and two. And now they're even, so Cold Spring Harbor gets the job done there. Now they'll look to get their personnel on as coming out of the box is Mozzie. There's Testa, 17 goals as an eighth grader. There he is at X, Testa. Spins around the cage, BTB shot off the mark. Ground ball picked up, so the possession stays alive. Good catch up top. That by Sammy Bruno. Here's Bauer. He's got the goal so far for Cold Spring Harbor. Gets downhill. Pumps the brakes. Slide comes his way. And Manhasset gets the takeaway. Now they look to move. It's a good defensive work by Manhasset getting a takeaway and there's Petroselli and Mondiello up top. Mondiello, the MIT commit. 
18 goals a year ago. But like many of these guys, an advanced role this year. And he looks to get downhill. Mondiello off the screen. Hands off. That is big Cole Purcell. From X. Pisano with the cause turnover. And a timeout is called by Cold Spring Harbor. We'll take it with them as well. 2.47 left in this first quarter. Ben has it with a 2-1 lead. You're watching it all right here on the Varsity Media Sports Network. Welcome back to Cold Spring Harbor. Dylan Butler, our entire varsity media crew, is here with you here under the lights, like it should be at Cold Spring Harbor. And this late March evening, they indeed bring the cold in Cold Spring Harbor, a chilly night here for Cold Spring Harbor's opener and Manhasset's second game of the year. Jimmy Howell as Grego. Good clear for Cold Spring Harbor. And up top, that's a good look at Gunnar Anderson. Great to see him back on the field. Missed his entire junior season with a torn ACL. Another guy, too. Multiple sport guy, terrific soccer player, so he missed last soccer season as well. Coming downhill, the bouncer nearly got past him. Brady McKean with the shot. But M turned around, found it just before it crossed the goal line. Manhasset more of the ball here in this first quarter. But just a two to one lead. Both of those goals coming on extra man opportunities. Here's Mondiello, draws the short stick. And that's in Brady McKean, a guy who will play two ways. And Purcell now comes out of the box. There's big number 33. Arnold, brother Edward, plays at UPenn. Final minute of this first quarter. Petroselli to Mondiello, up top to Purcell. Here's Arnold with 34. Colin at X. Beschel in and out of a stick. Look out. Pole comes his way. Somehow Beschel, though, continues as Ulico is right in his grill on that ground ball. Here's Purcell with 17. And 
Nine seconds. Mondiello, the bouncer, off the mark. Here's a backup with 3.4. Colin feeds a crease behind the back shot. No goal. So Manhasset, more possession, but just that one additional goal as the Indians, a 2-1 lead here after the first quarter. Welcome back to Lessing and Bouchard Field. Dylan Butler, our entire varsity media crew here for the start of the second quarter. Manhasset with a 2-1 lead. It's Giacobbe and Bruno again. They split the first four face-offs of this game. And Bruno wins this one. Sammy Bruno, the youngest of the Bruno boys that come back on. Older brothers Jacob and Ben both at Amherst. Sammy, the quarterback of the football team. And Bauer gets it back to McGloin, and there is Sammy Bruno. Bruno takes a high check, continues to come downhill, works it at X. Mazi. And here comes McGloin. He's got the short stick matchup, spins inside. McGloin, he's going to go. McGloin fires it wide. McGloin, Bond says, is just a freaky athlete. 6'2", about 190. Inside rolls, putting the fenders. Delayed penalty. Is this a goal? It is. Mozzie attacked it. Wasn't sure if there'd be a crease violation there, but Mozzie buries it. And let's see now about the penalty. It'll stay on. They won't wave it off, so it'll be a one-minute slash. So it's an and one for Cold Spring Harbor. And there you see the slash coming there against Kevin Burns. And then sneaky move by Mozzie. Seven goals a year ago as that fourth attackman. And Mazi has the Seahawks tied at two and their first man up opportunity. Face off though, one by Manhasset. Giacobbe, a big win there. And some physicality. Here, the whistles were blown, and I believe that was for a Manhasset timeout. And of course, both of these teams, as you mentioned in the beginning, Two of the more storied programs. And take a look at these numbers here for Manhasset over the years. 22 Nassau County Championships, 16 Long Island Championships, six state titles. How about 68 All-Americans to have played for Manhasset, including, and there's 25 currently playing at the different levels of college. And that's a pretty nice number to get. 1,106 all-time wins. And a few of their current college players are guys who play at the absolute highest level. I'll show you them now. Here's Joey Terenzi. Remember Joey Terenzi now kind of playing in a bit of a hybrid defensive midfielder role for Virginia. Cal Girard, we mentioned him in the open, of course, at Duke. Aiden Mulholland 
at Michigan. Mark Silos, part of that face-off triumvirate all from the island up at Cornell. And Louis Perfetto, one of the Perfetto boys, doing his thing at Boston University. Those are some of the next level Van Hassett alums. We'll show you that kind of graphic throughout the year as well. And I think it's always important to, to show where guys are and who they're playing for. And, you know, if you watch college lacrosse, uh, of course, whatever, whatever the level is, uh, there's a lot of Long Island guys competing on that next level. There's Colin. Just chased around as he's looking to kill this penalty. There's 33 seconds left in it. This is all you're going to have here now. It's just going to be Chase, the guy with the ball. As Manhasset, obviously in no hurry to do anything. Man down for the next 12 seconds. And that also shows you how important that face-off win by Giacobbe was, but also the wing play to get the ball off the carpet. That's Dylan Shear. Part of the second midfield unit, the sophomore, an old school kind of throwback guy. Another guy who also plays in the wing. So we're even now. And Hassett gets the job done on the man down. And they'll look for the go ahead goal here. As we mentioned in the open, a lot of different faces. Guys who have been on varsity, really, for both of these teams, but more advanced roles. Mondiello! Time and space, Mondiello buries it, and Manhasset has the lead once again. Another look as Patricelli dodges the short stick. Goes back, and from that distance, with that amount of time, is not going to miss. One and one for him. One and one for Petroselli as well. And that's a face-off win for Manhasset. It's been pretty balanced there. But Giacobbe with one more so far is Patrick Arnold. And Mondiello, fresh off scoring the goal, comes out of the box. Of course, wearing that special number 32, Johnny Driscoll's number, and we'll detail those numbers. An errant pass, it's on the ground. Sammy Bruno chases it down and wins it. It's a good job by Bruno, and now Cold Spring Harbor are gonna have to try to clear. Here's Grego. Gets it to the pole in Pisano. Nearly intercepted. Ball on the carpet. And it's scooped up. Cold Spring Harbor gets the ball. Inside roll, another f uh, flag is thrown. A chippy first half. Lefty shot fired wide by Bauer. And we'll see the call. Could be a one minute slash. So the fourth man, excuse me, the second man up opportunity for Cold Spring Harbor really never got a chance to even get on the offensive side of the field on their last one. They lost the face off. Ground ball was picked up by Manhasset and that was really it. They killed it off in the attacking zone. Here's Bauer. Hitched by McGloin, back to Bauer.
Kevin Burns works at the X where Testa operates. Tried to get it out to Bauer, in and out of his stick. Big ground ball. Bauer attacked it the other way, gets this ground ball. He's knocked down by Arnold, and another flag is thrown. So we're even now, but Cold Spring Harbor will go back on the man up. As it's McGloin now. McGloin, a guy who started for Cold Spring Harbor as a freshman, as a short stick D midi. He takes his short stick D midi to X. There's Bauer. Bauer spins, feeds up top, step down shot, a bouncer, and M makes the save against Bruno. So M's third save. This will be a 30-second man up. Here's a good look at Matthew M. Made 114 saves a year ago, had a 59% save percentage. Go on and play at Tampa. Bauer, plenty of time and space, went right into M's stick. So M with four saves early on, and once he got the clear, Manhasset can do what they did earlier and just kill off this man down. So while Manhasset is two for three with the man advantage, Coltering Harbor now 0 for three. And it's Manhasset with the one goal lead here with five minutes left in the first half. Petroselli. A big point of emphasis, Cromwell said with Petroselli, it's been working on his shot selection and just being a little bit more aggressive, especially when he gets short sticked. And that's where he is now, but not attacking that right now as Manhasset shows a lot of patience here. Now here's Petroselli against Bruno. Little stutter step, works it to X. Petroselli's open on the back end if they get it back to him. He'll get it up top, he'll look to dodge again. Cuts inside the pole, draws the slide. That's Daniel O'Connor, they call him Doc. Bit of a hybrid this year for Manhasset. We'll see him on attack, we'll see him out of the second midfield as well. Takes his defender behind the cage. O'Connor back up top. Tough feed inside, trying to find Beschel. And he was in the crease, so a crease violation against Manhasset. As Grego will look to clear. Dennis Bond really excited about him this year, his opportunity as a senior to start in the cage. Says he's never seen a guy just take more shots, whether it was in scrimmages or practices. Said he just walks around the school with bumps and bruises, but it's now his opportunity after Carson Kirshner had a terrific high school career for the Seahawks.
And this part of that second midfield line for Cold Spring Harbor. That's Dylan Riley, younger brother of C.J. Riley, now at Michigan, number 21. Up to Gunnar Anderson. Gunner, bull dodge. He'll get it back. And McKean also lowers his shoulder against his defender. There's Burns. Burns spins, looking for thought perhaps an inside roll. It wasn't there. And he'll try it again, it looks like. Burns feeds, tough pass. A low one, Mozzie lost it. Big ground ball and a good opportunity for a timeout by Cold Spring Harbor with 1.52 left in the first half. We showed you that rich history of Manhasset. How about we show you what Cold Spring Harbor has done over the years. 14 county championships, six Long Island championships, and they've proven if they get to the LIC and they win it, they're winning a state title because they've got the same amount of state titles, six of them. 35 All-Americans have played at Cold Spring Harbor. 21 current collegiate players and 710 all-time wins in Cold Spring Harbor across history. And as we showed you with Manhasset, here are some of their next level guys. You mentioned Patrick Pisano, just an outstanding close D at Yale. We said before Riley up at Michigan, Danny Striano at North Carolina. And Jesse Phelan, once upon a time, was right next to Pisano his partner in crime on this close D now at Dartmouth and Kyle O'Grady, who a year ago was here on the close D for Cold Spring Harbor, he at Hofstra. So those are just some of the current college players to have come from Cold Spring Harbor. So let's see what Dennis Bond and his coaching staff, Christian Lynch and Paul McDermott. Let's see what they've worked up here for the final 152. And there's McGloin, 44. He's got the short stick matchup. And Matt and Franco. There'll be a few different d middies running out there for Manhasset and Beating his man, going high, M. Terrific save to deny McGloin. Ball on the carpet. Bruno looked for it, wasn't able to scoop it up. Just a scrum now for the ball as we're minute 17 left. Bauer comes away and they'll go back to McGloin. This time McGloin's got the pole. The slide was coming his way, so he pops it out to Bauer. Inside the final minute now of this first half. A low scoring affair with Manhasset leading three to two. Bauer takes a high stick, none called. A little hitch trying to split defenders. Good idea to pop it back out. Good defense here from Manhasset. And this perhaps the final stand of this first half. McGloin spins, looks to back his defender down. McGloin with 19, still on it. Oh, his defender fell down. McGloin looks to attack, goes high, saved by him. And Manhasset comes away. And no final shots as the ball went into Jack Mulholland's stick, but Maddie M making some important saves. Six in this first half to lead the way for Manhasset, including on the other side of things. There's a little shake, a little bake by Petroselli, comes back the other way, and Mondiello 
wearing that number 32 jersey, scoring it for Manhasset. Halftime here at Cold Spring Harbor. Manhasset, a 3-2 lead. You're watching it right here on the Varsity Media Sports Network. High school sports fans, Varsity Media Pass is the exclusive live stream partner of Nassau County Playoffs. For semifinal and championship coverage of boys and girls lacrosse, softball, and baseball, head to varsitymediapass.com to order. Varsity Media is the home for New York high school sports. Are you a local business looking for new and creative ways to promote your company? Varsity Media offers affordable rates that can get your message across to a demographic of 18 to 54 years of age. Our follower base across social media is over 50,000 strong and our viewership numbers per game are in the thousands. Don't blow your advertising budget on old staples like TV and radio media. Reach out to Varsity Media to get the best bang for your buck. Hey sports fans, did you know Varsity Media live stream broadcasts get viewed by college coaches nationwide? Through our announcer's storytelling and insight on your athletes, we can help your players get an edge on college recruiting. Find out how by reaching out to Varsity Media today, 516-403-2050, or email ben at varsitymedia.net. Looking to grow your business on social media? Let Varsity Media help you. With over 50,000 followers across our platform, sponsor a segment during the broadcast and share it on social media the next day. It's the best of both worlds as you'll get thousands of plays and your ad will live on the broadcast forever. Contact us today for sponsorship packages by calling 917-470-0864 or emailing varsitymediasponsors at gmail.com. Did you just have the best athletic year of your life and now you want to show it off to college coaches? Well, let Varsity Media help you. Varsity Media's college recruiting videos show off your unique skills to help you land a spot on the team of your dream school. We'll provide music, spot shadow effects, and a link to send to your next coach. Contact us today for more information. Don't rely on word of mouth or cold emails. Let Varsity Media help you take your game to the next level. Feel like your game film is too stagnant and not providing you with the insight that your coaches had hoped for? Varsity Media offers game film to help your coaches develop a game plan to execute on game day. Our current clients love the Varsity Media difference, which includes more insightful camera angles and a speedy upload process. Start building your championship team today with award-winning individuals at Varsity Media. High school sports fans, are you following Varsity Media on our YouTube channel? For the best coverage of New York high school sports, make sure you head to youtube.com slash varsity media. Three easy steps. First, hit that like button, and then be sure to subscribe. And finally, tap that yellow bell to be notified of all of our upcoming sportscasts. Thank you for following Varsity Media on YouTube. Varsity Media is offering a video folder that you can customize to meet your needs. A photo of your athlete can be elegantly placed in the front panel. 
Essential statistics with a biography can be printed on the inside panel, and videos can be downloaded and viewed on an LCD screen for as long as two hours. The attractive video folder can be placed on a coffee table and instantly becomes a conversation starter. Order your video folder today by logging into varsitymediapass.com and click catalogs, or give us a call at 516-403-2050. When it comes to advertising, are you hitting the right audience? Why waste your time with television or a free print publication that's given out at a local deli? Varsity Media has your back. With a following of over 50,000 and a local demographic ranging between the ages of 18 and 54 years old, it's time to get that return on investment. Plus, here's the best part. Your ad lives forever on our YouTube page. And with a large on-demand audience, it's a grand slam to advertise with Varsity Media. Varsity Media offers live streaming services for any sport. With human beings behind the camera, you can expect the proper coverage angles during each game. We offer customizable options such as live scoreboard, multiple cameras, instant replay, graphics, and even announcers. Find out how you can save $100 off a live stream package with Varsity Media by calling 516-403-2050 or email ben at varsitymedia.net. Did you know Varsity Media now offers action photography for all sporting events? Available for individuals or teams, we'll send dedicated photographers down to field level to capture your best moments. Our rates are affordable and our photos will leave you with lasting memories for a lifetime. Contact us today, mention this ad, and get $25 off your first order. Email ben at varsitymedia.net or call 516-403-2050. Welcome back to Lessing and Bouchard Field here on the campus of Cold Spring Harbor High School. Dylan Butler, our entire varsity media crew here. It's halftime. It's Manhasset in this meeting of Nassau County Blue Bloods with a 3-2 lead over the Seahawks. Let's take a look at some of the first half stats. Pretty even to this point. Cold Spring Harbor, 12 shots to Manhasset's 9. Manhasset with a slight edge at the faceoff X. They've won four of the seven face-offs. Matt M has been the busier of the two goalies. He's made six saves to James Grego's one. And perhaps the story of the first half, at least, are the man-ups. Manhasset two for three on man-up opportunities. And Cold Spring Harbor, 0 for three. And in a one-goal game, those get illuminated a little bit more. Back to the face-off effects, where it's Giacobbe and Bruno again. And we expect to see this a lot this year for Manhasset. They had a bit of an embarrassment of riches the last couple of years, where Cal Girard, not only did he win 83% of his face-offs last year, but the majority of them were clean wins where the wing play really wasn't involved and the wing play will be very important this year. And Bauer, a little over aggressive. And another man up opportunity for Manhasset. This will be a 30 second hold. So the fourth man up opportunity. And you can see Bauer right at midfield trying to make sure that Manhasset didn't get in and was all over Giacobbe. So a 30 second man up opportunity for the Indians. Mondiello had one of the three First half goals, the third actually. Patrick Arnold, Luca Petroselli, all of those guys with a goal and assist apiece. BTB attempt by Beschel. It wasn't there as there's now 10 seconds left on the man up. Well, 
Low to low, and the angle was right there. Patrick Arnold had a great look, just missed the cage. As we are even now. On the yellow, draws Cole Newman, the long stick midi. That's Marco Petroselli, 21. The younger brother of Luca Petroselli. What a look to the crease, and it sneaks in. You'll take it any way you can get it, and Beschel has doubled Manhasset's lead. Let's take another look. It starts with Colin at X. And there's a feed. Beschel deflected off the stick of the Cold Spring Harbor defender. It was Rex O'Connor off his stick and in. So Beschel gets on the board. And it's a 4-2 lead now for Manhasset. Battle off this faceoff. And it goes to Manhasset. And the Indians will call timeout. Off that faceoff win. As we mentions some very special numbers of course for Manhasset it started really in the beginning with that number 32 you see that for Johnny Driscoll of course the 1976 graduate of Manhasset an All-American two-time MVP of the Nassau Championship game went on to Virginia where he was a three-time All-American played five seasons with the Saints won a championship there a member of the Manhasset Lacrosse Hall of Fame was an assistant coach at Notre Dame as well and unfortunately in 2002 lost a six year battle with brain cancer so uh, that number every year is a special one but as are now number 44 and 4 44 Ryan Keese's old number and 4 Michael Farrell of course both of those former lacrosse standouts from Manhasset sadly lost their lives tragically in a car accident, but again, their memories are alive every year now with the awarding of those numbers. And uh, this year, as you mentioned, 32 goes to Mondiello. Michael Farrell's number four is Patrick Arnold's. And then 44, Ryan Keese's 44, appropriately, of course, going to Jack Melholland's as well. So a terrific a history there of Fort Manhasset, remembering some of those who have played before, keeping their legacies alive uh, through that tradition of awarding those numbers. I think it's such a great idea. Instead of just retiring a number, when you award the number and you have a conversation with your kids, that's, they, they learn more, I think, about who those players were to your program and what they meant in the community more so than just having a number retired. Off to timeout, there's Purcell to Mondiello. I mentioned that 32, Jack Peterson now at Harvard Ward a year ago, and a couple years ago is Hunter Panzik now at Air Force. And there at the crease, Danny Colin. He gets his first and a great feed from X as well. And Manhasset scores the first two goals here of the second half to extend their lead as you see it. Again, it's Mondiello attacking, feeding it eventually to X. There's Arnold. What a great look. And Colin right there, a terrific inside finisher is Danny Colin. 34 years ago for the Navy commit. We'll go on and play for Joe Amplo. And now Manhasset momentum squarely in their corner as Purcell comes out of the box. And 
This is game number two for Manhasset. They beat Roslyn 10-7 in their first game of the year. And that one, Patrick Arnold and Danny Colon, three goals apiece on the yellow with two. Luca Petroselli and Dylan Shear, a goal apiece. As you mentioned, for Gia Kobe, a struggle at the face-off X, winning only 30% in that opener. So faring much better here in game number two. And for Coltsring Harbor, this is their curtain raiser of the season. So part of that new power conference in Nassau County, which for us on the Varsity Media Sports Network can mean some terrific matchups of some of the best teams in the county all playing each other, but also it's an opportunity for some of those teams that maybe aren't the best teams, they, they have more favorable matchups now as well. Here's Petroselli to X. And that's an errant pass trying to find Mondiello and it's over and back. So Cold Spring Harbor, they have not had a lot of the ball here to start this second half. And there's Bauer to get it started. Alex Bauer was a guy who started as a freshman on that team that went 18 and one, won a state championship. They beat Garden City and Manhasset. And even as a freshman, Bauer played some important minutes and was on the field late in those games. So a lot of lacrosse for Bauer, a lot of big game lacrosse for Bauer. Here's Dylan Riley, lowers a shoulder. Spins, good defense by Manhasset. That was, looked like that was between a shot and a pass. They'll say it was a pass, it went off of Gunnar Anderson's stick. And that's gotta frustrate Dennis Bond and his staff because you go for such a long stretch of not having the ball and then pretty quickly into your possession, you turn it over as M tries to fire it low, looking for Mondiello on the clear. And the ground ball goes to big Cole Purcell. He'll pump the brakes. And offside were the Indians. So it's Cold Spring Harbor now. Back at the ball, that's Brady McKean. Andrew Mazi and Alex Bauer, they've got the two goals to this point for Cold Spring Harbor. And Kevin Burns just now coming out of the box. Of the starters on this Cold Spring Harbor team, number 16 was the only one not on varsity a year ago, and Burns fires it wide of that far post. Here's Mazi, a fourth attackman a year ago. McGloin lowers the shoulder. Slide comes his way. McGloin still with it. And McGloin pulls Cold Spring Harbor back a goal. When your defender Breaks his stick. Yeah, you've got the green light. We'll take another look. As you see there, now it becomes a one-on-one -on -one matchup, which McGloin takes advantage of and sneaks it inside this near po post. A year ago, 21 goals on the season. Had three in the state semifinal win over Pleasantville. Scored again in the championship game as Cold Spring Harbor went back-to-back -back as New York State Class D champions. Again, wing play, so important, and Bruno comes away. Good decision, and look at this now, McKean, step down, McKean bounces it over the net. 
he had, I think, a lot more time and space than he even thought was possible there. Backup, though, was there for Cold Spring Harbor. Trying to get it back to McKean. It's on the carpet. It's picked up, at least momentarily, and it will be Manhasset ball. Manhasset a 5-3 lead here on the road. Danny Colon, one of five different goal scorers on the night. which in itself you've got to feel is a, a good sign for Keith Cromwell and the Manhatt Manhasset coaching staff that so many different guys are finding the back of the net. Here's one of them in Patrick Arnold. Another one in Mondiello. And another in Petroselli. So all those guys with one goal apiece in this one. And Petroselli's got the short stick matchup. Slide comes his way. So wisely goes to X, a low pass though that Arnold was able to recover. And now this possession stays alive. Beschel up top, low pass. Here's Mondiello, a little shake, a little bake from Mondiello. He'll back up and go again. It's Colin at X. Colin feeds it in front. It's loose. Arnold picks up the loose ball and fires it in. Patrick Arnold might not have been the intended target on in the pass. It doesn't matter. An opportunistic goal for the Amherst bound senior. And you see it again. It was attempted. The pass was for Beschel, but it was a little bit in too tight. But it was perfect for Arnold. The lefty nets his second of the game. And it's now a 6-3 lead for Manhasset. Bruno. Another big face-off win. There's not that true Fogo for Cold Spring Harbor this year, so... Bruno's going to be the guy to take the majority of the faceoffs. You might see Sam Giraputo as well. But the idea is to get Bruno rest when you can. And that's the case right now. Bruno on that first midfield line rests, and here comes Anderson. Downhill, bouncer, in the save. Loose ball scooped on that far sideline. And we're going to stay with Cold Spring Harbor. That's McKean. And again, has a short stick matchup in, in Franco. Of course, last year and the last couple of years, you had... James Lapina, who was an absolute beast at that short stick demedi position. Bouncer, wide of the mark by Dylan Riley. And really, it was kind of a one two punch for Manhasset at that position. That's Cold Spring Harbor. Some great defensive work and a little over aggressiveness. But you can see 37 was Eric Salura. Another look at it. First it was Mulholland, then Salura with the slash. So it could have been a one minute slash, instead, it's a 30 second. Man up in Cold Spring Harbor yet to capitalize. This is their fourth man up opportunity. Bauer right into M stick. Didn't change levels, went high to high. 
which for a goalie, when you can see it like that, you should save it, and that's what M did. M has been very good. And look at this. Off the stick, Mondiello. Smart play by Mondiello. So we're even. With a minute 22 left in this third quarter. And you feel at this part of the game, the next goal, whoever gets it, is going to be a big one. If Manhasset can get it, they'll have a 7-3 lead. But if Cold Spring Harbor gets it, it's a two-goal game, perhaps heading into the fourth quarter. So a big possession now as we head inside the final minute of this third quarter. Patrick Arnold on that last goal, the first guy to get multiple goals for Manhasset in this game. He's got two and one. Here's Mondiello finding Arnold. Arnold's got the short stick matchup in McGloin. Arnold, 22 left in this third quarter. And a flag here. So if they hold it, there's no face-off to start. And that's what Colin does. Good lacrosse IQ by Danny Colin, realizing the situation. So he'll just run out the clock here in the third quarter. Manhasset will start the fourth quarter man up without a face-off as well. So good lacrosse IQ by Danny Colin as Manhasset will take a 6-3 lead into the break. We've seen what Matty M has done today. Gets that shot from Bauer. He's been all over Cold Spring Harbor opportunities. It's Manhasset with a three goal lead heading into the fourth quarter right here in the Varsity Media Sports Network. Varsity Media offers live streaming services for any sport. With human beings behind the camera, you can expect the proper coverage angles during each game. We offer customizable options such as live scoreboard, multiple cameras, instant replay, graphics, and even announcers. Find out how you can save $100 off a live stream package with Varsity Media by calling 516-403-2050 or email Ben at Varsity Media. When it comes to advertising, are you hitting the right audience? Why waste your time with television or a free print publication that's given out at a local deli? Varsity Media has your back. With a following of over 50,000 and a local demographic ranging between the ages of 18 and 54 years old, it's time to get that return on investment. Plus, here's the best part. Your ad lives forever on our YouTube page. And with a large on-demand audience, it's a grand slam to advertise with Varsity Media. Welcome back to Lessing and Bouchard Field here on the campus of Cold Spring Harbor High School. Dylan Butler, our entire Varsity Media crew here with you. So thankful you're able to join us here on a Friday evening as it's Manhasset with a three-goal lead, and they start the fourth quarter with a one-minute man up. And to further complicate things for Cold Spring Harbor, your top defender is in for a minute as Timmy Pisano picked up that one minute for a slash. So Manhasset was cooking, especially early on the man up. They are two for four. There's a look at Pisano in for a minute. So big chance here for Manhasset to extend their lead. Mondiello fakes it, goes back the other way. Special popped it back out. Oh, great chance here. Low to low. Colin wants it. No, says the official. No, says Grego as well. 
Hanel Newman turns the corner. 20 seconds left in the man up. And Cold Spring Harbor will be able to kill this one off. So Grego, the good clear, thanks as well to Cole Newman. Did a solid job turning the corner to make sure it was a good clear. And there's Sammy Bruno. Coming out of the box is Mazzi. Great job defensively. Brian Fleck. Fleck, a first year starter. Last year he had all jacks back there. And this year, Brian Fleck joins the crew. There he is, number 12. And good stick work on the other side as well. 44, McGloin. Loose ball, scooped up. Oh, Mondiello absorbs a hit. Now maybe something here in transition. Mondiello lowers his shoulder. And he'll bring it back out as Petroselli got out of the box. Danny Colon back to Beschel, the Holy Cross commit, a guy who Keith Cromwell said just trying to figure things out right now and figures he'll be that righty attackman who's got a, a knack for the goal. Had limited minutes a year ago, but had five goals and two assists in those limited minutes. But he will get every opportunity this year to fill up the cage. More of that inside finisher is Beschel. Here's Purcell, good north-south dodger. They work it from X now. Well, oh, Mondiello is going to go a little question mark. Purcell. It's now Beschel. In a year's time, we'll have a shot clock on Long Island. Mondiello up top. Mondiello sidearm off the bar. Cam's all the way out to midfield. A terrific scoop by Mulholland, which at least allows his guys to scramble for the ball. It's one and all kinds flag on the field. Some physicality at midfield. Pisano comes away. He stick checked. Possession stays though. Testa wisely dumps it down. Im out of his cage. A tire blown behind the cage. <laughs> Some physicality. It's Friday night at Cold Spring Harbor. And another flag is thrown. So two fouls on the play. So let's see what we got here. Complete mayhem is what we had. And now we'll have the penalties. We'll have a cross check for a minute, and that's going to be locked in. And then a 30 second push. So Cold Spring Harbor will be six on four for 30 seconds. That cross check, the one I think that was at the end of the play that we just saw, that's going to be locked in for a minute. So, on a night where you don't want to open windows in the press box, it's a little bit chilly. It's a window of opportunity now for Cold Spring Harbor to get themselves back in it. Six on four. 
Man up. So far, 0 for 4. Man up. And look at that, an errant pass goes to the pole in Rowan Collins. Oh, that one's on the carpet now, trying to get it to Mal Holland. And another penalty against Manhasset. As McKean never able to pick up the ball. This will be a 30 second push. There was three seconds left in the original penalty. There's a lot of Manhasset players now in that box. So we will play six on three for three seconds. Look at all those guys. If there's a hockey penalty box, there'd be nowhere to stand. Six on three. And now six on four. It's a big chance for Cold Spring Harbor. Bauer up top. There's the hitch. Feed back to Bauer. Bauer. Bauer! Brings the power! And finally, Cold Spring Harbor capitalizes on the man up. Bauer gets his second of the game. And a massive face off here, especially for Sammy Bruno. Bruno wisely kicks it backwards. And there's Bauer. So man up stays alive as McGloin. Back to Bauer. Bauer! Off the mark. I think he might have gotten a piece of Mulholland on its way through. And how about that? The Manhasset player came out of the box and he came out early. I don't think the officials saw that. But when the penalty was over, there had to be at least one or two seconds on the clock and we saw Infranco get out of the, leave the box early. And Bonsard certainly, and he tried to get the officials attention Some of the fans saw it, as you probably can hear. Now the officials having a conversation with the coaches. So this is six on five right now. After Infranco came out early. It's unclear what's left. But good job by the officials at least recognizing it. And now, after all that, we are, in fact, even. So Cold Spring Harbor does get a goal back, and they're first on the extra man, and it was number seven here to do so. Bauer gets by his man, slide comes, Bauer, Bauer! And that's why he's going to the Big Ten. His third of the game, second in a row, and Cold Spring Harbor within a goal. You see first the swim, then the split dodge, and then Bauer not to be denied. Bauer, an all-county football player in the fall. Dennis Bond said there will not be a moment 
in this game or any this year that will be too big for Alex Bauer. As Sammy Bruno, a big face-off win. And Cold Spring Harbor now within a goal. And they've got the hot hand as well in Bauer. This though the second midfield unit. So it's Dylan Riley, 21, a guy who missed last year with back issues. Gunnar Anderson missed last year with an ACL. Here is Anderson. And six is McKean. Seven goals a year ago. McKean draws a double. Anderson the hitch. Anderson tries to switch hands, looks for help. Side netting. Side netting by Mazzi. So now Manhasset looks to clear, but a bit of a delayed ride. As Manhasset will get the clear. Look at Mondiello now. Mondiello switches hands off the pipe. So Pisano picks it up with 4.39 left. in the fourth quarter. Look out, unable to clear. Beschel comes away. Here comes Colin now. Colin, an angled run. Colin, overhand shot and a goal. So off the failed clear, Danny Colin gets his second and he takes back some of that momentum. An all-county honorable mention a year ago. You see Colin checks the rear view, gets around Pisano, and then a little tomahawk chop towards the cage for his second of the game. Giacobi, huge face-off for Manhasset. Looks for help, finds some, and in Franco, the short stick D midi. Look out, extra aggression now from Cold Spring Harbor. And that should be an over and back, it is. Here's Bruno. Wild one here tonight at Cold Spring Harbor. It's McGloin with Rowan Collins, the long stick midi on him. Here comes McGloin. Spins the stick, cuts to his left. Collins on him, splits him. Collins, that shot wide of the mark. Look out, there's a broken stick on the field. Out of the box is Mondiello, and a flag is thrown. Bodies are on the ground. A flag is on the ground. How about that heads up play by Mandiello coming out of the box, the ball on the carpet. He realized his teammate couldn't pick it up, didn't have a stick. There it is again, you see Mandiello. What a heads up play by him. So this will be a one minute man up. For Manhasset with 3.01 left. They've got a two goal lead. And they did a fantastic job.
So actually there's two penalties on it. There you see it. Two in the box. So we're six on four for a minute. Man, you talk about a, an opportunity here for Manhasset. First, you could be patient. And you know there's going to be someone who's open to take a shot. Two-goal lead for Manhasset. They've already got two men up goals. Both came early. It's Colin at X. No reason to rush things right now for Manhasset. 220 left in regulation. And that will be even. So essentially, it was just an opportunity to take a minute off the clock for Manhasset. And now we'll see the aggressive defense by Cold Spring Harbor as Beschel has it at X. At some point, you wonder when Grego will exit his cage. And first, there'll be a discussion, timeout by Manhasset. Take a look at the upcoming schedule for both of these teams. Starts with Manhasset. Farmingdale coming up next. And then you go non-league with John Jay and Richfield. Richfield with Kyle Colsey, one of the better players out of the, not only the state of Connecticut, but in the country as well. Carry, and then it's the Battle of the Sound against Darian this year on the road for Manhasset. And you go to at the new plate, Syosin, and then it's Shoreham Wading River at LIU Post. So a lot of big time matchups for Manhasset on the year. Let's take a look at Cold Spring Harbor's upcoming schedule now. And the Seahawks will take on Southside next up. And then Island Trees and Plain Edge, those are your crossover Class D matchups. And you go back into the power conference against Syosset. You take on Horace Greeley. And it's Port Washington. And then that annual showdown with Huntington. A year ago, Cold Spring Harbor here. And it was on Varsity Media to start the year. They defeated Huntington. They did so by not winning a single faceoff. Anthony Annunziata for Huntington won every single faceoff, and yet Cold Spring Harbor came away with the win, and that's not something you would necessarily want to replicate for, for Cold Spring Harbor, but a good example of it's more than just what happens at the faceoff X. It's about possessions and meaningful possessions. So off the timeout, looks like Grego... It's on the other side of the field, which allows Cold Spring Harbor now to, to get another defender on. So they'll double the ball in the corner. You expect Cold Spring Harbor really to double at all times. Colin loses it. Pisano, Mondiello, aggressive. Where are we going? And Cold Spring Harbor gets it. McGloin got the ground ball and the timeout for Cold Spring Harbor with a minute 24 left in regulation time. A lot of big games for you here on the Varsity Media Sports Network. We will see the Seahawks again against Southside coming up. It's a Monday game. We head out to Suffolk County for what has been a good one these last couple of years. It's come down to the very end. In fact, last year, Bayport Blue Point won it in overtime against West Lysip. So we'll have that game on Wednesday. Also on Wednesday, a renewal of the rivalry. That is Manhasset, excuse me, Massapequa and Syosset. And then 
We'll have Syosset in Cold Spring Harbor, Southside in Garden City. Garden City opening this season with a big win over Farmingdale. On the girls' side, Victor, a perennial powerhouse nationally. They'll come down here, take on Cold Spring Harbor. We'll go to the Catholic League with Del Barton and St. Anthony's, and then a really fun one as well. Shore and Wading River in East Islip. Maybe in Suffolk County, those are your favorites. Not maybe, they are. East Islip, the favorite in Class B. Shore and Wading River, the favorite in Class C. So that should be a lot of fun as well. 12.30 start for that one. So here we go, Cold Spring Harbor ball. Grego's back in his cage. Seahawks down by two with a minute 24 left. Two years ago, they won by two at Manhasset. Excuse me, they won by one in that game. 8-7 was the win for the Seahawks. Great look there to Rex O'Connor. I don't see Bauer out there, so you wonder if he might have picked up an injury, because that's the guy that you would expect, especially late in the game, to have the ball. Turning around, firing the shot was McGloin off the mark. And Bauer, I'm looking at the Cold Spring Harbor bench, frustrated, head up, goes to the end of the bench, so might have picked up a knock there. Swim dodge, losing the stick. Massive ground ball, it's picked up by Cold Spring Harbor inside the final minute of this fourth quarter. Fleck, who gets this loose ball? The ground ball will go where? Nowhere yet, now it's to Gunnar Anderson. They've got to go, Cold Spring Harbor. And he loses it. Mulholland with the stick check. And some more chaos. And that might be the move right there. Just send that ball down <laughs> akin to a hockey icing. So now Grego has got to bring it down. And Cold Spring Harbor, it looks like, has run out of time here. They'll have one last effort. Downhill dodge. Feet up top, and Bruno, that'll be largely a cosmetic goal with three seconds left. Bruno buries it from distance for his first. Another look at it, and Bruno was calling for it a long time. And he'll get it from X. McGloin picks up the assist. And if you're Giacobbe here, all you want to do is tie up Bruno with three seconds left, and you got yourself a, a road win. Bruno wins the faceoff. There's a check at the end, a couple more checks. And a good job by the officials just to clear the teams. It looks like a, a Manhasset player was hurt at the very end, and it looked like it was McGloin with the check, you can see how the Manhasset players were upset about the play. Another look here. Watch 44, oh yeah. That's a shot to the head. I didn't see who the Manhasset player was, but hopefully he's doing all right. It was Tyler Giacobbe. So Manhasset wins this one, 7-6. We'll have the Bowie 4 player of the game when we return right here on the Varsity Media Sports Network.
Are you a local business looking for new and creative ways to promote your company? Varsity Media offers affordable rates that can get your message across to a demographic of 18 to 54 years of age. Our follower base across social media is over 50,000 strong and our viewership numbers per game are in the thousands. Don't blow your advertising budget on old staples like TV and radio media. Reach out to Varsity Media to get the best bang for your buck. High school sports fans, Varsity Media Pass is the exclusive live stream partner of Nassau County Playoffs. For semifinal and championship coverage of boys and girls lacrosse, softball, and baseball, head to varsitymediapass.com to order. Varsity Media is the home for New York high school sports. Varsity Media offers live streaming services for any sport. With human beings behind the camera, you can expect the proper coverage angles during each game. We offer customizable options such as live scoreboard, multiple cameras, instant replay, graphics, and even announcers. Find out how you can save $100 off a live stream package with Varsity Media by calling 516-403-2050 or email Ben at Varsity Media. Inside the tent to the end zone. Oh, he's got a wide open receiver. AJ Dub. Welcome back to Lessing and Bouchard Field. Dylan Butler, our entire Varsity Media crew here. Final score, Manhasset beating Cold Spring Harbor 7-6. And a big reason why is our Bowie 4 player of the game. And that is the Manhasset goalie, Matt M. A terrific performance in the cage. And we're joined by him now. Look at this. Modern technology at its best. Matt, um, congratulations on, on a big win. Uh, listen, uh, under the lights at Cold Spring Harbor, you know they've got some guys who could shoot the ball. Uh, it seemed like you were you were on it from the very beginning. Yeah, yeah. After our first game, um, I think I didn't play that well, but in practice, I've been really improve, trying to improve on that and just get dialed in for this game. You were seeing one of them, Alex Bauer, fires from distance. You range up high with your stick. You're a guy. You uh, your story's been detailed well. It's sophomore year. Darien game, big rivalry game. You enter the cage, and from that point on, you've stayed in the cage. Uh, a couple of state championships, some some different parts this year, but I'd imagine the same kind of uh, expectations as they always are for Manhasset this year. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, goals to win. That's what we did. Well, one thing that you've done, Matt, today is uh, you're going to get, and listen, this is a perfect night for it because it's a little bit chilly, right? So yeah. you want to make sure yeah. you get yourself a hoodie. And we've got one for you. This is the Bowie 4 hoodie. There you see a look. Uh, you can see on the side, on the screen, on the side there, it's got uh, this game and the date, right? Pretty cool on the sleeve. Uh, so listen, you could walk around town on Plandom Road over there, and uh, you could rock it. Your teammates might be a little bit jealous, but that's <laughs> fine. You're the player of the game. But uh, a, a well-deserved one for you, Matt, and, uh, and we certainly wish you the best of luck as well going forward this yeah. year. Thank you so much. All right, that's Matt M. He is your Bowie 4 player of the game. And the Bowie 4 story, six childhood friends from Long Island. They grew up together on and around the water, and they developed a special connection to the serenity that the water provides. This is where the Bowie 4 mantra was born. We choose the water. And with every purchase made, they donate a portion of the proceeds to water conservation groups. Bowie 4 offers a full range of apparel and accessories for team stores, corporate gear, and fundraising initiatives. All of our products are designed, created, and printed on site. Bowie up your wardrobe and get your limited edition game day hoodie, the one that you just saw Matt M. holding up, for 24 hours. You could do so at www.bowie4.com. See you out on the open waters.
That's your buoy for player of the game. And now it is time for your speed island. Speedy play of the game. Improve your speed with Onyx Salva and the team located in Garden City. Visit speedislandny.com to book your session today. And even though he was on the losing side today and there was a lot of settled offense, one guy who sped his way to a goal is Alex Bauer. You see there the swim and then the split dodge and Bauer powers his way speeds to the cage and gets the goal to make things interesting for Cold Spring Harbor late. And that was your speedy play of the game. So once again, your final score, Manhasset, they improved to 2-0 on the season. They win this one 7-6. Cold Spring Harbor drops their opener of the season. I want to thank our entire Varsity Media crew, our executive producer and birthday boy, Ben Turchin, for our technical director, Chris Sweeney, for Ron Pierre, Travis DeLuise, bringing you all those big moving images. I'm Dylan Butler. Thank you for joining us from Lessing and Bouchard Field here on the campus of Cold Spring Harbor. We look forward to seeing you next time right here on the Varsity Media Sports Network.